Well, round two, day two of the NFL Combine, and cornerbacks are in high demand, especially when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles, and especially since the Eagles are going to be linked to every cornerback in this draft and haven't really heard of the Eagles being mocked to anything else at this point. Um, as much as I don't think the Eagles will get a cornerback in the first round, this is going to be really interesting because there is a lot of a lot of athletic ability in this class, and I'm excited to see if the Eagles will actually go for a corner in the first. Let's go over the second day. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Yo, yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So I'm going to go over some news for the Philadelphia Eagles now. Uh, you know, cornerback is definitely a situation for the Eagles where, you know, we're kind of waiting on, you know, the Eagles have started to make their moves with their roster. And obviously with freeing up some money, um, not even that, but, you know, cornerback is going to be one of the biggest questions where James Bradbury is sitting there. Is Vic Fangio kind of sitting there saying, you know what, can James Bradbury really pan out in my scheme? Um, not really sure, but we're kind of expecting that Bradbury will not be here and, and probably will get cut. We know that Slay is going to stay. Unfortunately, it is what it is, um, you know, probably for one more year. But looking at, obviously, the combine and, and what has happened, I mean, look, I, look, Nate Nate Wiggins from Clemson, 4.28 on, on the 40, uh, one of the fastest times, um, unfortunately, because of uh, due to other activities and stuff like that, he had a hip flexor injury, uh, which he will be out uh, a little bit. You know, he will have his pro day. He'll he'll make it for training camp and all that type of stuff. So, um, you know, will this affect his draft stock? I, you know, I if there's a team that's not too picky about like injuries, like Achilles injuries or you know ACLs, is is a different story. When it comes to these little injuries that happen, it just happens at times. Um, and I don't think that's really going to affect them that much as well as a lot of, you know, maybe a lot of teams are going to be too picky because I think that's what happens. Teams get over too much about size or about little injuries. You know, injuries in the past do matter, but when it comes to recent events that are very small, nothing crazy. Um, so Nate Wiggins is definitely a, an athletic talent. No joke. Would have liked to see him in some other things as well. Um, so I'm very excited for him. So he'll get another chance at his pro day right before the draft. Teams will go see him at, at the school. And, you know, kind of unleash himself there to get more interest. Uh, now, Quinion Mitchell from Toledo. We, I think the Eagles have been linked to this guy almost every single day. Okay, 4.33 uh, 40-yard dash. Okay, Mitchell reached the two fastest speeds by any quarterback during the back pedal and transition 45-degree reaction drill, which, is, which was 20.87 and 21.27 miles an hour. That's crazy. I just I had the I had to put the stats down because I didn't remember the numbers, but the back pedal, he was he was quick transition with his body, how smooth he was. Uh, you know, wow. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you saw in the senior bowl a lot of a lot of fans, you know, Eagle fans or just fans in general are not really seeing him as you know, they thought he was a, a pretty physical cornerback. Some that the Eagles would definitely love, no doubt. It'd be nice to have a, a, a you know, a cornerback that wants to hit somebody in the mouth. Uh, but he's really showing out. The draft stock has rose up to the top with Quinion Mitchell from Toledo, and I'm excited to see what more he has in store. To see if you know the Eagles actually bring him on a unofficial visit. The Eagles already met with him already, um, so I'm very excited about that. Now, Terry and Arnold, one of the Alabama cornerbacks that. Uh, the, you know, another one that had a really solid day, not the best of the others, but I think a, still a very good, solid day. Um, I think what's, what was, you know, his smooth transition, um, his, those hip drills, those agility hip drills, you know, uh, you know, swinging back and forth. Um, I thought those drills, he did really well. Like he looked smooth. He was, his turnaround was really good. Speed up field was really good. Um, I think there's going to be another guy to look out for in the draft, no doubt. I mean, we've talked about him a million times and uh, another guy that's linked to the Eagles almost every single day um, as well. Obviously, the other side to that is Kool-Aid McKinstry. Now, Kool-Aid did not practice or sorry, he did not get, uh, he did not do any workouts in the combine. Now, apparently he had a Jones fracture in his pinky toe, apparently, which really sucks. And this isn't a big deal. This isn't an ACL. It's like I said, with these injuries, it's not not a big deal. This is something where he'll have surgery on it. 
and you know it's a pinky toe you know it's gonna take a little bit of time um you know and the toes are weird at times because sometimes like you know you have to make sure you get the right surgery make sure you know the toes are very anything on your foot is the worst because you break something in your foot it affects the whole your whole entire foot of what you do um and when you keep reestablishing yourself on getting these foot injuries these nagging injuries that happen over time so teams need to make sure they look into his health they look into a lot of homework on him to make sure that his foot is going to be all right for the future that his foot is going to hold up okay because as, as a cornerback you know as fast and as good and physical as he is uh coming off the ball and, and doing what he does right you know you got to make sure that these guys are going to get into those those situational type injuries again because this is just the start of it so wouldn't make a big deal out of it i think he'll be fine obviously he'll have surgery he'll have his pro day too um, kind of get back in the swing of things, get his draft stock right up or try to get it as much far up as possible. And, you know, teams will be able to see if he's healthy or not. If he looks weird in his running or he looks different, you know, with the toe. I mean, look, I know it's one pinky toe, but sometimes, you know, these things happen. You know, guys get foot injuries and foot injuries and foot injuries. So um, could this help the Eagles in the draft? Could he move down a little bit? I mean, sure, somebody, one of these guys is definitely going to drop down um, you know, I think the Eagles will have a huge chance to get one of these guys. I think Kool-Aid will have a, a really good chance, uh, too. So very excited about him. So I think, um, like I said, a, a lot of athletic ability, and I'm just talking first round right now because situationally, like, look, the Eagles in the past, who have they, have the Eagles tried to draft a corner, you know, uh, at least one in the high rounds, you know, Patrick Sertain was definitely a target for the Philadelphia Eagles during that draft. Okay. Sidney Jones back in 17 before that Achilles injury at, at his pro day um he was supposed to be the first round pick for the Eagles at cornerback and then had the Achilles and and they took a chance on him at I think pick 52 53 in the, in, the, in the second or whatever it was um you know so I I think the Eagles you know you, you haven't drafted the corner since you know Lito Shepard you know it's been it's been years and as much as I think they'll go after another position and they won't touch corner here because I, I think they'll go after more scheme fit um, in the later, you know, in the second round, at least when it comes to cornerback, if that's where they want to go, um, you know, uh, it's going to be, a, you know, we'll see if they look, if they draft the corner in the first round, I'll be, I'll be so happy. I'll be just be happy that I'm wrong, you know, um, you know, but depending on what word free agency kind of designates where this move is going, if Bradbury gets cut, and the position is totally empty, I'm not going to think that Killy Ringo's taking over. I'm not going to think that Eli Ricks is taking over, or Isaiah Rogers, okay, or Zach McPherson, you know, whatever the case may be with that. You know, Vontae Max will probably be a post-June cut, and, you know, I don't think Ringo has showed enough yet. I don't think he's ready yet. I think there's still time, but I think depth at corner is perfect. But if you want to draft your number one guy, this is the draft to do it. Opposite of Slay, pair those two up, learn from each other, you know, or learn from Slay, really. Um, you know, so there's a lot of good things to take from it, and um, hopefully the Eagles make a, a pretty good move down the stretch. But like I said, I think there we have to be a little bit more patient into free agency and, and where, you know, if the Eagles don't spend money at corner, if they leave Bradbury on the roster and say he's more of a, you know, extend and cut type player, um, you know, the longer Bradbury's on the roster, the more we're going to believe that he's going to still be here. And I really can't believe it. Howie Roseman's already said that, you know, he's technically on the roster on contract. Well, no shit. He's here for two more years counting this year. Uh, but it, they're, you know, if you need to get rid of somebody, you extend them, you cut them, you, you, you spread out the dead cap, you make it a lot cheaper for the Eagles to eat that up. So not really worried about that that much. Um, so very excited about this class going forward. You know, we had a couple little injuries here and there, nothing, nothing crazy. I don't think it's anything to be like, oh my God, it's going to damage, uh, somebody's draft stock. Cause you don't want to see that happen to any of these guys. And you know, the Eagles are at 22. Um, I think they're at a good spot for cornerback because I feel like there's going to be enough quarterbacks taken. There's going to be a tight end. There's going to be a, a tackle. There's going to be a couple tackles. There's, there, there's going to be some wide receivers. The Eagles are in perfect positions there. I think one of these four are going to drop down for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think there's a good shot at it. So um, even Ennis Rakestraw, uh, another guy that I really liked in the second round, um, didn't really test too well. It was like 4.51. 4, 4. His other activities really weren't that bad at all. Can't put too much in 40 times, but his speed didn't look fantastic to me. Um, you know, 
but as more of a, uh, you know, I figured, you know, I mean, more of a zone cornerback, um, you know, if, if somebody that's highly in zone, you'd, you'd think, uh, you know, be a little bit quicker, but, you know, maybe down the line. Some guys just have bad, some guys just have bad combines, unfortunately, you know. So, you know, we'll see in the near future what happens on these pro days uh, with some of these guys. But those top four right there, you know, are, are perfect, perfect for the Philadelphia Eagles to definitely have in the building. So, guys, let me know in the, uh, in the comment section below what you guys think about uh, these four cornerbacks in general or who would you get and, you know, do you wait? another round or do you not get a guy in the top 10 just because you know it may be not right for the scheme is not you're not playing press with these cornerbacks is a waste of money to even look at these guys or even bring them in and waste them on unofficial visits you know you guys let me know in the comment section below and that was day two for the philadelphia eagles and uh you know that was just the cornerback section of it you know we'll get into other ones as well so very excited we'll see you guys on the next one kicks what falls out peace out guys peace